Right, so let's go through successive ionization energies. Now for successive ionization energies, I'm going to use the example here of aluminium, and this is a graph of the positioning of ionization energy, which remember would be kilojoules per mole. All the different ionization energy values for aluminium, one after another. Now as we can see, aluminium has got 13 electrons. This is the proton number, but we're assuming it's for the neutral elements, we would have 13 electrons as well. And so the electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. And we can group these by shell. So we've got shell 1 is just here, shell 2 is just here, and shell 3 is just here. Now we can also see quite straightforward from the graph as an early get-go, there are two very big jumps on our graph. There are jumps from the 1, 2, 3, 3rd, to the fourth, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, the eleventh to the twelfth. So what's the reason for these big jumps? Well the big jumps then, if you were to look at the electron configuration, would be here and here. So between the third and the fourth, that would be one, two, three, four. So the fourth electron, this one here, is on a new shell. Now if you think about your very simple idea of the, the concept of having an aluminium nucleus and then you've got shells surrounding it, the gap between two shells is actually quite large. All these electrons for instance and all those electrons for instance and these are each in their respective own shells. But then when you have to transition between a shell, all of a sudden it becomes more difficult to remove that next electron. Now the reason isn't because the shell is full, it's because the shell is much closer to the nucleus. So this shell here, this new shell, is very much closer to the nucleus. That means it takes more energy for it to have its attraction to the nucleus broken. And that's why there's a big jump. Now, similarly then, between the 11th and 12th, that would be moving from shell 2 to shell 1. So the 12th electron here is the first one of shell 1. Just like the 4th electron here was the first one we try and take away from shell 2. Remember going backwards through this. So here, this gap is because we're now trying to remove this 12th electron from the first shell, which is closer to the nucleus than any of these were just here. There is a slight gap between subshells, but we don't need to consider that at A level. I suppose the other thing we should mention just before we move away from this is why is there a gradual climb in each of the shells, even though we're not transitioning between a shell for any of these climbs? Well, the reason for this is, if we look at these, for instance, each time you remove an electron, you create a more positive ion. Now, every time you create a more positive ion, you are increasing the number of protons compared to electrons. So we have more protons compared two electrons due to electron loss. So that's not because we've added on new protons, it's because, because we're staying in the same element, it's because we're losing electrons. And therefore, the attraction to the remaining electrons is stronger. So the gradual climb is because we're creating a more positive ion each time and we've got more protons compared to electrons due to electron loss and the reason for the big jumps is because every time we have a big jump, this fourth one for instance, we are trying to remove that electron from a new shell which is very much closer to the nucleus and therefore more strongly attracted and harder to remove. I hope that sums up some of the first ionization and then successive ionization questions you might have. I'll leave you to it. Happy revising.